Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jane Speed Shop. So today is the day I will get started on getting the engine back together. Uh, I did all the measurements and we're also going to take uh, a look at what my goals are with this engine. I don't think I ever named a number or something that I want to have uh, achieved with this build. So I'm going to explain a little bit uh, some things and uh, what my plan is with this engine and how far I am I, I did all the measurements and that sort of stuff so if you're new to the channel S124 V8 turbo project with an M134 V8 Mercedes 5.0 V8 engine in an S124 station wagon so uh, if you're new to the channel in the right corner for you is my logo you can click on it you see all the other videos and other episodes of this build so everything is clean so what I did is uh, put all the new main bearings in there tightened all the caps measured all the clearances uh, that's all good they are all in factory spec uh, like uh, on like 75% of the range so it's it, it's uh, on the bigger side of the clearance so that's pretty good I think for if you want to take more power out of an engine so uh, I also have new rods I consider this because yeah if you see the original ones nobody knows how much they can handle there are people in the US doing a turbo on an engine like this just over with petrol and driving around with just over 500 wheel horsepower <coughs> I considered doing that but this engine was pretty dirty inside and there are also numbers known from people driving with compressor engine with uh, 700 horsepower on the crank 750 some with a turbo conversion so the compressor engine I just have stronger internals uh, piston wise these engines should have a stronger piston because the head is has more material in it I didn't measure it how thick the head is I will do that and put it down below so if ever is there somebody who has measured the head thickness of a compressor piston yeah I'm very curious about what that is I know for sure because I've seen pictures that a compressor uh, engine has a mux a uh, bigger looking rod so it should be stronger uh, these rods I have made uh, they, I have let them made for the same spec as the original one but just they are just more massive they can the, f they, the spec for this is like they can handle like 200 horsepower per cylinder so that should say on a V8 they could handle 1600 horsepower that's a lot of course I'm never going to reach that in this engine because uh, I have the original pistons and original cylinder walls so but I want to have I think this is the weakest link in the engine so that's why I did it so they are much heavier there are like uh, 78 grams heavier so the crankshaft is also balanced um, so there's material added to the crankshaft to balance it more so it's all balanced all the the journals or, or the the bearing play I measured they are on the on the highest point of the factory spec so that's pretty good so I have more oil uh, film in between so that's all pretty good so there's more what I'm going to do to the engine I also ordered uh, headsters I don't have them yet for this engine there is no company that delivers uh, a set for it. I know there's Wystec, I think they deliver a Hester set, but uh, it's from AOP and AOP, uh, what I heard from it is not, it's not easy at this time to get Hester delivered. It's uh, the lay on it and that sort of stuff. And I'm here in Europe, so it's also different than you in the United States, I think. So um, I had some contacts and they gave me a company that also making uh, Hester's. So it's an, an spec that's comparable to ARP 2000 studs. Uh, they are tested in several engines with much more 
uh, pressure in the cylinder head, under the cylinder head, then I'm going to run. Uh, the, the, the pressure that I'm going to run is around 1.3, 1.4, maybe 1.5 bars. Uh, they are running like double the pressure, so these studs are strong enough. Uh, and the benefit is with it, why I did it, is because if you're turning a bolt in a head, in an aluminium head, there's always a chance you damage the threads in the block. So it's an M11 mm, times 1.5, so it's a, it's a pretty big uh, fret, I think. And um, so they should be strong enough for the power, that's not the problem, but the reason is that I want to keep it all safe and that I can, if I take a open the engine for the second time or the third time I still don't have to worry about uh, the threads in the head that's the thing all the Mercedes engine had all all the where the bolts were were all highly coils <coughs> so you had a steel uh, there was steel to steel when you put a bolt in and now it's an aluminium so you have a chance that you will damage the thread that's the whole whole point of it so I have um, ordered one set of these head studs. So if, I, if people are interested in these head studs, then message me on my website and I can uh, give you a pricing for a set. So if you're interested for that, uh, just me, email me and we can, I can have a look what we can do. Also for the rods, I have another set for these, uh, of these rods. They are, uh, you can fit them in the 4.3 and in the 5 liter M113 engines, uh, not in the M113K engines because they have smaller journals and the length is different of course so if you're interested let me know I think I will put these the set for sale on my website and uh, so I have the set in house so I can ship it pretty pretty soon if you want it I can order extra sets if there is enough uh, people that want them I can do another order for these so uh, pistons original pistons I get the rings to uh, a bigger bigger dimension so the top ring I did to 0.55 millimeters and the second ring to 0.65 because it's an uh, it's a cast iron ring and the top one is I think what is it stainless steel I don't see, I'm not sure chrome 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 ring and I checked the oil scraper ring for a gap for at least 0.25 and that what that's what they told me it was what I had to look out for it's big enough so it's it's much bigger than original because original you can have the second ring on 0.4 millimeters and the top ring on 0.3 millimeters max um, so point, I'm almost doubling the, the, the gap uh, but I want to make sure that I will not damage the engine because it's a uh, silly tech or LL seal engine block and there are a, a lot of stories about it that if they get too hot they will split the piston and then uh, yeah, because the ring is getting stuck in the, in the bore I know there is a guy in uh, America or in the USA of course who's driving with uh, two turbos on it on an M113 K he has gets the rings to 0.7 so that's even bigger than I have he's racing that car on a track mine is not built for racing yeah it's built for the street so it will not be long durability with the foot on the throttle so it's it's, it's much different car of course and I'm going to drive um, on ethanol not fully so the car will have a flex fuel system in it so it will run on uh, just 95 octane fuel to uh, a low boost setting for I think 0 0.5 0 0.6 maximum so I will aim for around 400 horsepower and the torque value for that I'm uh, maybe six to seven hundred newton meters we will see uh, what's capable but just a safe setting because the compression is staying one to ten so uh, that's uh, the same kind of pressure that's also run in a clayman compressor kit are a different compressor, there are certain compressor kits on the market, they're running also around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 bars. So that's, so that's, the, that's the thing what I'm going to do. So uh, with a flex fuel system I can then fill up with ethanol to a maximum of 85%. That's where I calculated my fuel system for, for the injectors and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to run 1100cc injectors just on 35 psi of fuel pressure. Um, I have a fuel lab fuel pump for that. 
that can deliver enough fuel so I can maybe deliver fuel for 900 horsepower or even more uh, through these injectors. Uh, but my goal is for this engine, what I think, is if I see 750 horsepower and a thousand newton meters, so the torque level is more important for me. But uh, when I see a thousand newton meters, that's where I think it's enough if I'm going to hit that. I think it's a possibility because uh, there are enough uh, engines with this capacity that will easily hit that with a 1.5 bar uh, so I know the the engines it will stay together at 750 horsepower because there are people in Scandinavia drifting with a 5.5 compressor engines but then with the turbo on it on ethanol and they're running on 750 horsepower with no problems on these cylinders I know they have a longer crankshaft in them but the block is the same the only difference in those blocks are, you can see here, the three caps in the middle are supported with side bolts. If you have a compressor engine, there's another bolt on the fifth and on the first. You can see it on this engine, it's not there. That's one of the differences in it. Uh, for the rest, you have a longer stroke crankshaft in it, of course, different rods and a low compression. <coughs> of course, that's a difference in it. Uh, on the block there is of course difference in the cylinder heads with the compression you can run more RPM because I have single springs the compressor has a dual spring and of course different camshafts these are pretty lame camshafts because these I think 5600 to 5800 uh, the, there is no real power to mate on a normal aspirated engine out of these you will see the torque curve going down very fast so um, I'm not aiming for a high RPM engine, but these engines are built for low RPM, a high torque. So I will, f I think when the two turbo spools are pretty fast, that I will see a very high torque number. So we will see what what it will give. But yeah, I think it's possible to run safely uh, uh, 700 horsepower and 900 newton meters. And my if I see like 750 to 1,000 newton meters. 750 horsepower and 1000 newton meters that's where I yeah it's still the street car so uh, that's that's the goal and I think that's possible to safely run with this engine so uh, the upgrades that I'm doing to this engine is the drive of uh, the rods and and the headset that's what I'm going to change um, turbo wise if you not seen the earlier videos this is a pulsar DTX 3582R so it's rated on regular fuel to around 700 to 730 so my turbo guy from speech up the stage told me it's possible to run on ethanol you will get higher results so it should be possible that this turbo can flow uh, to 750 maybe a little bit over it but yeah that's uh, I want to have still a possibility of some safety level in this engine so I'm not building it to break it I just want to have a fun fast old station wagon that's that's the whole goal about it so everything is clean at the moment uh, so I'm going to take uh, the caps and everything off put the crankshaft in the only thing I need to measure is the actual crankshaft uh, play on it and I need to measure the vertical clearance of the piston rings. That's the only thing I need to do. And then I'm going to mount uh, the pistons on the rods, put the crankshaft in, and uh, from there we go. The, the headsets I don't have yet. I hope I will get them these this week or next week. We will see. And uh, yeah, we go from there. So, I hope you like this video. I hope if you got any questions or you want any information about this, just let me know and I will try to answer them and uh, yeah in the next video I'm going to start building up the crankshaft in this engine and then from there we go so thanks for watching see you for the next video don't forget to look at my website jamespeedshop.com is over here if you're interested in the rods or in the headsets let me know and see you for the next one bye bye